This video is made by Emily Marie Watercolors. You can find links to my Facebook page and my Instagram on the information below. Or you can scan the QR code to link you directly to my Instagram. Hello and welcome. My name is Emily. I am from Emily Marie Watercolors and today I'm going to be showing you a tutorial on how to paint this light haired, long haired, golden doodle named Lenny. Now today's tutorial is not going to be a beginner's tutorial. I'm not going to go over a lot of uh, paper, paint choices, techniques, etc. But I do want to give you different steps and color choices in order to recreate this exact photo. Um, you can see a link to the photo underneath in YouTube and if you'd like to try this yourself at home or I just feel free to watch the tutorial if you're wanting to try it with your own dog at home. Before we start, I do wanna share with you the materials that I am using, um, but you feel free to use whatever materials that you like to use at home. For paper, I'm using a Fabriano. Uh, it, it is a 300 gram paper, but it is only 25% cotton. Uh, 300 grams, of course, is 140 pounds. So although it is a thick paper, it isn't 100% cotton. I know there's a lot of people out there who love 100% cotton. If you have arches paper, use arches. I am based out of Mexico and so we do not get arches paper cheaply here. So I use this hot press Fabriano as a good alternative. Um, and I also use it in order to show other artists that you don't always need to use the most expensive paper in order to get good results. Uh, I am using a 9 by 12 size. For paint brands, the majority of my paint colors today are Daniel Smith watercolor brand, with the exception of one color that could be easily uh, changed out for a Daniel Smith color. The one color that I am using today is an Art Philosophy brand color, and that's coming from the Terrain uh, pack. And here I'm using the color that's, that's called maple. But I find that that color choice can be easily switched out for uh, quinacridone burnt orange. And that is a Daniel Smith. So you're able to use either. Um, of course, pencil and a kneaded eraser. I am using liquid masking. Uh, for the small hairs that are covering the eyes and that are covering the mouth. And so in order to use this masking liquid, I'm using a 10-0 brush that has a very fine tip. This is not a very good brand of brush because of course, as you know, liquid masking tends to ruin some brushes. I'm also using as a preliminary step, I'm using a watercolor marker in order to give me some deep purple tones to dark areas like the eyes, nose, and mouth. This is an optional step, but if you're interested, I'm using a Tombow dual, dual tip brush that is watercolor, and the color that I am using is color 603, so it's a purple. It has a, a brush-like tip, and then it has a finer tip for details like the eyes. Then the brush that I'm using for the entire tutorial is a silver black velvet brush. This is a size six brush. It is a round head. I did not use a smaller brush for any of the details uh, just because this brush does have a pretty good point. If you feel more comfortable using a smaller size brush for some of the last step details, feel free. And Finally, at the very, very end, once everything is dried, I am giving a slight added detail with a waterproof black pen, a Micron pen. The pen that I use today is a 003, which is a very, very fine tip, but a pen like a 01 uh, would also work just as well. So those are the supplies that I'm using today. Get your supplies together and uh, let's begin. 
So throughout this tutorial, I am going to keep the original image of Lenny to the left side of our watercolor paintings. Uh, that way I can explain to you how I see the image and how I'm translating it into watercolor. So here I have the steps that I took to create this watercolor and I wrote them out for you. So steps one, two, and three is the sketching, getting it ready, and then you'll notice that I have nine layers. Now, it's not necessarily meaning that I'm layering paint on top of each other, um, but I am adding all these layers so that you can see the different colors and the process that I'm taking. What am I doing first, next, and last? So let's start with step one of our painting. So step one is very basic. We're going to trace the outline of our, our dog, and we're also going to be tracing the dark shadows. Now, I am using a device called, an app called DaVinci Eye. Um, I use it on my iPhone, and it projects the image. Well, actually, I look through my phone to see the image on my paper, and I trace it. The reason I do this is multiple. One, um, I used to be an art major, so I know how to draw already, but I don't want to take the time for all of my pet portrait commissions in order to sketch them out. I also have found that I'm able to get a good level of detail and the dog ends up looking more like itself when I'm done using the DaVinci Eye app. So step one, trace the outline all around uh, the hair on the outside, trace the nose, eyes, and mouth. Uh, and then for the shadowing, it's really important that you're tracing the outlines of the shadows. We're not wanting to trace any of the lightest parts here because you're not going to be painting the white of the dog, you're going to be painting the shadows. All right, so step two is to paint fine hairs around the eyes and the corner of the mouth with masking liquid. So from the uh, finished version that you can see of mine, I already have painted the masking liquid onto the eyes and the corners of the mouth. I'm doing this because there are white hairs, you can notice white hairs that are crossing the eyes and there's some little white wispy hairs that are on the corners of the mouth that are going over the darkest parts of the dog. And those I want to keep white and so instead of using a super fine brush to go in between the hairs, I'm going to paint masking liquid so that I can paint the black and not have to worry about accidentally covering those hairs. Now for the optional step three, this is a step that I always use in my pet portraits and that is to use a Tombow watercolor marker. Um, I'm using purple number 603 and I'm using that to color in the black of the nose the eyes, and the mouth. So you can see from my final version where exactly I have painted using the watercolor marker. Now it will, this purple will come through in the final painting um, and it does also allow you to have deeper tones faster because I already have one layer of watercolor marker down to begin with, but this is a total optional step. All right, now it's time to start painting. So our first layer is going to be a very light wash of Daniel Smith's Carbazole Violet mixed with a tiny bit of Lunar Black and a very generous amount of water. So it's going to be a very transparent layer. And this layer, I'm going to be painting every single shadow that I see minus the purple from the watercolor marker. I'm not going to touch the watercolor marker area yet. So if I look at the original picture of Lenny the dog, I'm going to look at all of the areas that have shadows. So obviously I see shadows around the ears, I see shadows under the, the, the mouth in the chin area, I see shadows by the eyes, and I do see some very light shadows uh, on the top of the forehead. So every single shadow I'm going to paint with this very light wash. 
even if it's darker, I'm going to start painting every shadow I see, everything that's not a bright, vibrant white. So as I'm painting, uh, I am looking for the chunks of shadows. I'm not looking for every individual strand here. I'm looking at the shapes that the shadows are making in the dog's fur. Um, when we create these shapes as the background shadow, our eyes will automatically fill in the empty space between the shapes and the image of the strands of hair will start to look like dog hair. So I'm not painting individual strands, I'm painting the shadows behind them. All right, so here is a picture of where I'm at right now. I just finished layer one, which is my light wash of violet and a little bit of black. Uh, I painted the shadows only, not the individual strands. So feel free to pause the video here if you're still painting. Uh, and you can always use my watercolor as a guide, especially if you're just starting out. It might help to train your eye to find the shapes of the shadows. All right, our second layer is going to be a very light wash of quinacridone magenta. Um, I noticed as I was looking at the original image that around the ear area and uh, the forehead and underneath the chin, you do notice a slight pink tone. And so my second layer is going to be this light pink tone. All right, so after I first did the shadows, I'm now looking for different tone colors in my picture. I already painted the magenta that I found around the ears. Now I also see another tone that is a yellowish uh, brown color, and that's around the, the nuzzle. So I'm going to use a very light wash of the color maple. That's an art philosophy brand color. If you don't have that color available, you can use a burnt orange, you can use a raw umber, um, a burnt brown, anything that's this light brown yellow. Uh, so I'm going to paint a very light wash all around the nose and under the mouth. Now that I have some of my base colors on my dog, I'm going to start, my layer four is going to be a darker wash uh, where I'm going to be adding some depth to the shadows. So the darker wash of layer one, again, that's a carbazol violet and a little bit more of lunar black this time, a little bit of less water. And I'm also going to be dropping in a brown that I made with a little bit of purple and black. So the brown that I used was uh, that maple color. Uh, like I said, you could use a burnt, a burnt orange as well. I added a little purple and black. And I'm dropping the color into some of the shadows, especially like if you notice the more intense shadows around the mouth. 
Uh, there's an intense shadow to the left of the face that I dropped a little bit of that brown color in. And I'm just giving some depth to the shadows. All right, for layer five, I'm going to start some of the details of the mouth, the collar, and the nose. So first, I'm going to use a quinacridone rose, a very light wash of it for the tongue. I'm mixing a phalo turquoise and deep sap green for the green of the collar around the Batman sign. I'm using a yellow new gamboge for the Batman uh, signal as itself and I'm using a lunar black for the nose and around the mouth area as well as around the Batman collar. Now for the nose you'll notice that I'm using a darker black on the bottom of the nose area as well as inside the nostrils. And the upper part of the nose, uh, where the highlight is, I'm actually just dotting color, dotting the black, and leaving some of the purple to come through. I'm also doing that same technique under the nose, uh, on the lip. That way, the purple that comes through, it actually gives it a really nice shadowing effect. All right, so my layer six is just going to be a darker layer five. So a darker quinacridone rose for, this, for the tongue and a darker mixture of turquoise and green for the collar. So as you notice, I'm going to first start with the tongue, adding in all of the shadows. And then I also noticed that I'm missing a little bit more of a magenta along the ear, so I'm adding that as well. Now I have a darker combination of my, my fallow turquoise and deep sap green for the dark spots around the collar. And I'm adding a medium wash of lunar black to add the shadows in the gold Batman from the collar. I love lunar black because you can still see the base colors underneath and it gives a really good rippling effect, um, a really good gradients. So now for layer seven, I'm going to continue adding depth to my shadows. I'm going to use a dark lunar black for the nose and a slightly medium wash for some shadows. So I'm going to start going around uh, the outside of my dog and deepen some of these shadows that I found using a medium wash of Lunar Black. Now I'm moving on to the nose. I'm using a slightly less concentrated uh, with water lunar black and I'm making the bottom of the nose and around the nostrils, inside the nostrils, a little bit darker.
Now that I finished adding some depth to my shadows, I did notice that the area below the mouth and around the nose is a little bit darker brown than what I have currently on the paper. So my layer 8 is going to be a semi-light wash of that same maple color. So not quite as light as when we started, add a little bit more pigment to yours, but I'm going to add a little bit more color and depth into the mouth, around the mouth, and around the nose. And as you can see, I'm also slightly touching up around the forehead as well because I do notice some of those tones there. So the last layer that we have today is going to be the collar color from layer 5. That was the mix of the phthalo turquoise and deep sap green. Um, and I'm adding a little bit more violet. Now this color is going to be a surrounding the dog. The reason why I'm adding this layer and this color behind the dog's fur is because since you have such a light color of fur, I need some sort of contrast behind it. Now I'm, I don't want too much contrast because using too dark of a color might actually uh, make your dog look like it's within the color instead of the focus of your painting. So you might kind of lose that focus. So I decided to uh, mimic the color of the collar. If I didn't use a turquoise collar, I think I would have used probably a purple like I used for the shadows. Um, and of course it would be a wash, it wouldn't be a very concentrated color. So I'm gonna start by wetting my paper. I want a wet on wet technique for this so that the color evenly disperses uh, along my paper. If I do a wet on dry paper technique for this, I'm going to notice that there's going to be some uh, overlapping of color that's gonna happen, it's not gonna be as uniform. Of course, when I'm dropping the color in, I do like to have some sort of gradients of color, so I am dropping more concentrated color in certain areas, and I'm making sure that I am bringing the color into the individual hairs so that I get a little bit more definition around my painting. All right, so once I let my painting completely dry, now I'm going to use a kneaded eraser in order to erase all of the pencil lines and to remove the masking liquid that was covering the white hairs around the eyes and around the mouth. And the final step, I'm going to add some details with a Micron 003 pen and add my signature. Um, now, you notice that I'm adding just a little bit of details with my, my black paint. There were some areas that I noticed once I took the masking liquid off uh, that I needed to kind of fix a little bit. Around the mouth, I noticed that the hairs to the right side of the mouth aren't actually white, they are that maple color, so I added a little bit of maple color to the right. And now I'm adding a little pen to add some crispness around the Batman collar. So I've taken my blue painter's tape off from around my painting, and here's the final product. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and have learned a little bit more about how to paint long-haired 
and light-haired dogs. Make sure to like this video and leave me a comment. I hope to be creating many more tutorials in the future, but of course I want to know that people are finding them useful. So leave me a comment for what you think, what you liked, what you wish I had explained in further detail, and make sure to follow me on social media, Facebook or Instagram in order to find what my next tutorial is going to be about. Thank you for joining.